guys, Mac here with the Outer Circle, and today we're looking at another Is It Shit unit. I'm joined, of course, by my mate Kat. Hey, babes. And we're going to go through this unit together, the last of the troops choices for the Legiones, Astartes, uh, Space Marine, Crusade Army List, which is a bit of a fucking mouthful. So our squad weighs in at 175 points for 10, 305 points for 20. Kat, how do you feel about the Space Marine Assault Squad? They're a lot better than the um, Tactical Squad. Uh, with the new price um, cost, they seem to overshadow the Tactical Squads. Um, yeah, I think points for points, these guys have actually become justifiable to use now. Um, they get a couple of good special special rules, you know, they get free hits from Hammer of Wrath, they got hit and run. Um, the jump packs, of course, make them go around reasonably fast. They can also take um, a power weapon or a hand flap or a plasma pistol for one in every five chaps. So, that's kind of neat. They can all take melter bombs, which is a uh, key point so a lot of people bring armored um, vehicles to these games obviously and these guys can actually do some real damage whereas your tactical squad just seems to be a buffer in between so these guys are actually and the maneuverability a 12 inch move six inch assault well sorry 2d six inch assault uh, your average is seven on that so you've got a big area of effect and the fact that you can just leap over a uh, big terrain so you can just be out of sight and then uh, assault a vehicle is huge. I, I prefer these guys over tactical squads, obviously. With, with that, there's a few hidden dangers. Um, in marine on marine combat, like when you're having a fist fight, that shit can really drag out. And it's not really about the number of attacks um, per se, because you're not going to make a huge difference with plus one attack. Um, you know, in a 10v10, 5v5 fight, Marines, it devolves into a pillow fight. They simply just can't hurt one another, and you see, like, one, two casualties a turn, in my experience. So, this is where I like to insert a few clauses. It's Legion-dependent how useful these guys will be. You've really got to take the right Legion, or the correct right of war, or the correct uh, headquarters element. Cat, what do you think of that? Uh, yeah, agreed. If if you take ten dudes with just close combat weapons, don't give them any melter bombs. They're obviously going to suck. But if you take uh, twenty of them in any legion and give one in five a power weapon, they're going to slice tactical marines a bit. You can obviously gear them to what you want them to do. I favor them to just go as hunter killers for anti vehicle units. And they can obviously take objectives late game, and they have that maneuverability, whereas tactical squads need to usually set up beforehand, uh, and they don't have that maneuverability, so they can't get out of the way of all the anti-infantry crap in 30k. So they can't just hide behind a big-ass mountain and then last turn uh, move 12 inches or fly up the fucking mountain and take it. So you, you can, obviously, like everything else, you've got to gear, gear them to, to the uh, role you want them to... Uh, take. Totally, man. I, I think a very justifiable tactic is, like, if you're up World Eaters, for example, you'd be insane not to just give these guys fucking chain axes, because it's, it's free. Um, you know, a, a squad of just 10 of these guys with chain axes, 175 points, you know, don't even have to give them the power weapons, don't even have to give them the special weapons. You're playing against a Mechanicum player, and they're running Thalax, they're going to be shitting themselves that you charge them. You know, you charge in with rage, you know, swinging two attacks each, plus the plus two for charging, you know, AP force and no armor saves for the Thalax. They're, they're going to have a very fucking bad time. Um, Thalax are not cheap points-wise. Um, you know, you're looking at a really, really good unit for taking that shit down. If you're going to do that, you may as well give them a, power shield, a combat shield as well, giving them a five plus invo, which increases their survivability, and if you chuck a medic with them, uh, it's even more survivability, 
And then if you're doing that, you may as well chuck in a hot four power axes as well for those sneaky AP2 hits. So even against Terminators, you should be able to chip them away with 20 guys. You'll lose a fair few, but you'd be able to win that combat pretty easily. Sit situationally dependent, again, like a, a cheap 170-point throwaway unit of these guys with chain axes, as opposed to, you know, your unit's a mini Death Star of sorts. So, you know, the right weapon for the right time. Um, I think they've both got their uses. A uh, big point of note, is the Legion Herald one of the HQ options? I think it's very important to point out because he directly affects this unit pretty much the most out of the units in a Legion army. Because for the Loyalists, you'll get plus one weapon skill on all your units in the army when you've got a Herald. So, again, these guys being in close combat, it really helps to be hitting things on threes. Um, if you're traitors, all the units in your detachment are going to get plus one inch to both their charge and run distances, and they get to reroll their ones to wound on the turn that they successfully charge. So again, you're coupling that with the legions like the World Eaters, the Emperor's Children, um, you know, people on the receiving end are going to find things a lot fucking harder. And let's not forget the old fashioned chaplain. Uh, re-roll uh, hits and wounds, is it, on the first round of combat you charge? Uh, yes. Well, he's got the hatred. Um, yeah, that's right, hatred, yeah. So, re-rolls. Oh, okay, hit. so if you're playing World Eaters, you've gotten hatred outside of your deployment zone anyway, if you take the correct uh, Legion traits. Yep. Uh, if, you, um, if you're playing Dark Angels and you arm, like, the squad sergeant with, like, a crazy sword... You know, you could also be pretty badass because they do like crazy good shit with their swords thanks to their legion rules. Um, yeah, I, don't, I think this is a unit that's really benefited from the last Red Book release, this month's Red Book. Um, we were joking around about this earlier um, off air, but Cat, is the Red Book pretty much becoming the White Dwarf of Forge World, the monthly magazine? Uh, yes, it is, James. The it's it's getting so out of control. People aren't on the same page with rules anymore, and people can't keep up with buying these. Uh, obviously, the book form is expensive, but even the digital downloads, it's not a twenty or ten dollars. It's almost on par with the fucking book price. So people aren't on the same page, and then people getting up in arms that people are using, um, you know, uh, downloadable. Um, stuff. So, I'm. I'd like to see an underground, some sort of um, collated rule set, just to be brought out monthly. And it's like, hey, this is what we're. This is the same sheet of. So everyone's on the same sheet of mu music, rather than fucking six hundred books that are now obsolete. Yeah, look, I, I've collected these books from the get go. Kat, you know, I've got pretty much all the novels, all the black books. Um, the only ones I haven't been collecting are the red books. Because when they first dropped, I think they dropped the first ever Red Book like a month before another Black Book came out. And none of the Black Book units were in it. And it's like, well, I know where this is going. It's going to be outdated and on purchase. So I didn't buy that. And uh, I haven't bought any Red Books because they're outdated. They just get outdated so fucking quickly. And it's a clusterfuck. I want to support Forge World, you know, I'm showing that with all these fucking purchases sitting on my bookshelf next to me, but I, I, even I'm struggling to keep up with it, you know, like, I can't blame the people getting PDFs of this shit, because it's the only way to keep track, you know, people shouldn't have to be buying, these, these things are released twice, three times faster than codexes are in 40k, and people complain about that, you know, like, and, and some of this shit is really minor changes, but it can have its consequences. Like, the Apothecaries is a great example. People don't know what the fuck they can attach Apothecaries to. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that your experience, Cat, or...? Yeah, on, on your Facebook groups now, everyone, before a game, everyone's like, wait, can I actually do this still, or is it not a thing? And then everyone will start arguing uh, until they... Everyone, yeah, and even then, people aren't on the same sheet of music. It, it's good, though, to see them actually updating the game. So I'd prefer that than 
having your overpriced assault squads. Uh, so they fixed the price and they've given some weapons to rhinos and stuff like that. Uh, there's nothing they can't put in an FAQ, really. And until they've actually sorted out their shit, these red books seem kind of pointless. Like, why don't they just focus on the fucking black books? And then when everything's done, obviously release your FAQs um, as a free thing. And then when everything's fucking sorted out and we're at the Battle of Terror, then bring out your fucking expensive ass rule book, your yeah. red books and whatnot. It's probably a good idea to have a living document where, you know, it's just the army list and the army list gets updated constantly. No bells, no whistles, no fancy artwork. You know, just white sheets of paper, fucking, you know, unit stats written down on it, updated consistently from Forge World. That would be fucking fantastic and would be so much better than, you know, the red books are nice. They're, they look nice. They feel nice. You know, I don't own them, but I've seen them plenty of times. I At least with the, the black books, like... They get outdated, but the shit that's in them, all the pictures, the artwork, the fluff, is it's there to stay. The red books don't offer you that. They are a relic. The minute that the rules become outdated, you're like, well, it looks pretty, but meh. Throw it away. You know, the amount of red books you see on buy, swap, sell are going for like a quarter of the price, you know, six months after they come out because they just got outdated. Um... Yeah, I don't know. There's not been a huge amount of them released, but it just feels like there has been. There, there really needs to be a cheap living document because, I don't know, Forge World Games Workshop's financial departments don't understand that uh, there should be a price difference between something that's a PDF, you know, something that's a digital purchase, and something that's a physical copy that you're holding your hand. Like, stuff that's on the internet, it's make-believe. It doesn't actually physically exist. You know, like, you can't charge the same for something that's, you know, you're not printing it, you're not, you only have to make one of it, and then once you've made one of it, it makes itself, you can infinitely copy it. It's not like a, a physical book where you make the first one, and then you have to go through the same process to make the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one. So you, you can't justify charging people, you know, I think it's like 80 bucks for a red book on iTunes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That just seems retarded to me for a document that you know is is going to be outdated. Um, if you bought it once, you know, like a lifetime license or something for a red book, and they just, you know, you paid 120 bucks off the bat, or even 200 bucks, and they said you're guaranteed for life. This will get constantly updated. You'd be cool with it. That's not what they're offering. So you know, side note, but I thought it was worth bringing up because. Again, these guys are one of the units most affected by it. Yeah, well, with the data thing, I mean, consciousness is nothing but data. So, therefore, uh, just because consciousness is data doesn't mean that it's not physically real, right? But you can rip data. So, as soon as someone has that, it gets distributed freely. Uh there, there is a thing about having a physical book in your hand and you can put it in your bookshelf. There's the difference. Uh, what you're talking about with the uh, for $200 for your guarantee to get, you know, whatever. I think they did that with, uh, they're doing that with games now for um, getting people to pre-purchase DLC, which I find pretty bad, actually, because that means that it doesn't matter what you, it's like you're guaranteed to get something, maybe, if we decide to make a DLC for this game, maybe. So, uh, and it doesn't matter what it is, you're going to get it. So they could, like, it can be absolute and utter shit and you still bought it. So I, I'm not a fan of the pre-purchase bullshit stuff. Um, I'm sure a lot of fanboys would be. And they just, uh, you know, there's nothing, for all the fanboys out there, there's nothing wrong with just giving checks or sending a, a post check to Games Workshop. They'll take your money and you don't even have to get a product in return. So if, if that's the way you want to go, just fucking hand your money over to them. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Mark, uh, the Legion Space Marine Assault Squads, are we going to say, uh, is it shit? Well, I'm going to, yes, but they're, they're less shit than tactical squads, but they are shit because they're, they're pretty small in what they can do. They have the maneuverability, they, they can take a transport, but it has to be a big-ass flyer, and it's not dedicated. Uh, unless you take a right of war. So, 
Yeah, I'm going to say shit. Um, I'm sitting in the middle. I think with the points adjustment, they're, they're not shit. But they're not far off being shit. Um, again, Heresy, there's a lot of units which are very, very powerful. And all the troops' choices feel like in most situations, not all, but most, is it just feels like a troop tax. I'm just paying my points so I can get the cool toys. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching the episode, guys. As always, give us a like or a subscribe or report us, whatever floats your boat. Um, if you want to see a unit reviewed, if you're curious how we feel about something, you know, leave a message in the comments, PM us on like Facebook. We'll get back to you as quickly as we can with the correct response. And uh, we'll hear from you all next time. See ya.